My name is Darren Ramtren. I'm from Brampton, Ontario, Canada. I did my undergraduate degree at the University of Western Ontario in biology and genetics. I attended St. James Anguilla beginning in 2018, and now I'm a recent graduate of St. James this past September. During my undergraduate degree, I had the opportunity to participate in a lot of volunteer experiences and community outreach projects, as well as I knew I loved learning about science and the human body. So for me, medicine was a great way of combining both of those things, where I could further my knowledge and learn more about science, biology, physiology, and I could also help people in a tangible way through my career. So as I was coming to the end of my undergraduate degree, I started thinking about applying to medical school. Um, I had the MCAT booked and a family friend of mine actually approached me and told me that she had gone to St. James and really enjoyed the experience of living in the Caribbean for medicine. And I looked into the school, I sent in my application, uh, I got my interview and then once I got my acceptance, I decided um, rather than wait to go through the Canadian medical school application cycle, I wanted to start my training in medicine now. And luckily I was uh, able to move down to the island that uh, September, in September of 2017. Unfortunately, I got a little bit of delay because of Hurricane Irma, but I started back up again in January of 2018. So during my undergraduate degree, the program was pretty intensive, very science heavy, of course, doing a double major in biology and genetics. Uh, but talking to some of my friends who had graduated before me and got on to medical school, a lot of them were telling me, you know, medical school is tough. Medical school is a lot of work. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's all a very rewarding process. So I found that with myself uh, doing my training both in the Caribbean and doing my clinical training in Chicago. Um, there was a lot of hours of studying, a lot of time in the library, uh, a lot of time with headphones on as well, uh, trying to learn material and learn everything that there was to learn for medicine and for my exams. But at the end of the day, I think it's all been worth it because I feel like I'm comfortable and able to treat patients and help other people because of the knowledge that I've gained throughout the process. Adjusting from, you know, a very westernized North American busy city like Brampton, Ontario, I found moving to the Caribbean kind of a refreshing change of pace. The island of Anguilla is a very small population. It was only about 14,000 people while I attended St. James there. And it was very relaxed and quite a good environment really to study in. Um, not a lot of distractions, not a lot of noise, um, but a very good community of helpful, nice, kind, caring people. Uh, that being said, it also is a small island, so they have a limited amount of certain resources and comforts that I think we're used to in North America, uh, especially in Canada. So it did take a little bit of a lifestyle adjustment, um, but overall between the weather, the people um, and the community, it was really a good, great place to learn. For uh, any students who are considering going to medicine, especially for St. James and especially in the Caribbean, um, be ready to do work. I think no matter what program you go into, a lot of your success is gonna be down to how much initiative and how much proactivity you put into the process. There are always gonna be professors that are very inspired to teach you and very good with teaching you. And there are professors that might not um, be fitting your learning style, so you have to adjust accordingly. Um, and that's just gonna help you later on through the rest of your career. So for me, the biggest piece of advice I would uh, give is put in a lot of effort, stay organized um, and remember why you're doing it because at the end of the day, everyone has to go through this process and put in the work in order to become a doctor. <laughs> so when I was preparing for step one, um, you know, I had come fresh off the island from MD5, past the NBME, and to myself, I was realizing, you know, if I could learn as much as possible, it doesn't matter what question they're gonna throw my way, I should be able to understand and answer that question correctly. So part of my step one was really going through a lot of the material that I had already learned on the island um, and mixing that in with doing practice questions um, through things like UWorld. And I organized a plan actually. So I have this big Excel sheet. I'm a huge fan of Excel sheets and Google Sheets and I made a six month study plan. And I studied, uh, I scheduled my studying every day for those six months up until the day of my exam, um, doing about eight to 10 hours of studying every single day. But I would give myself Sundays off because it's important to like look after yourself and make sure you're you know, refreshed to study. Um, so what I would tell students if they wanna be very successful on these exams is have a plan, stay organized, stay committed to that plan. And most importantly, know yourself. Um, you know your learning style, you know your weaknesses better than anybody else. So what 
um, what one person does and makes them successful might not work for you. Um, so a lot of the work is going to come down to you understanding that and you creating some sort of strategy that's going to help you be successful. Going into clinical rotation, so I did all of my training here in and around the Chicago area. Um, it really felt like a big transition point of going from a student learning in a classroom, studying for exams to actually starting to handle patients and think about things like, how do I diagnose this person? Um, how do I come up with a diagnosis? How do I treat them? Um, all those things that we learn in basic sciences really start being applied to real life situations. And the biggest thing that I got out of my clinical rotations was, one, you get the experience of being a resident sometimes without being a resident. This is your opportunity as a student to gain that confidence, get over that fear of, you know, I don't want to hurt somebody um, and figure out where your skills are. Um, this is the time that you're going to set the foundation for what you're going to become as a resident. The other part of it is always put an effort. Um, it might not be your favorite specialty. It might not be your favorite rotation, but at the end of the day, each of these opportunities is a learning experience and we only have a limited amount of them. So the more you put into the process and the more you put into your rotation, the more you're always gonna get out of it. Um, and at the end of the day, if a preceptor realizes that, you'll get come out with a very good letter of recommendation because of it. Going into my fourth year, um, you know, preparing for step two and being able to complete that um, and kind of get those all necessary checkpoints completed is very important because you want to make sure you don't run into any hurdles or barriers because you haven't completed a necessary task. So um, that kind of preparation and organization is really going to be a key to helping you feel prepared going into residency applications. Um, the big part that I think a lot of students might not be aware of is that you need to really think out how you're applying to programs, especially what specialty you want to do, what kind of programs you're applying to, and how those programs are gonna perceive you through your application, because for a lot of us, that's the first point of contact we have with these programs is our application. Um, so for me particularly, uh, applications go in in September, I started doing my preparation in April. I started researching programs, I started reaching out to programs because I'm Canadian, I need a visa, so a lot of that information was very pertinent to me. And then in addition to that, I went to open houses, I looked through websites, I really tried to decide, does this program offer the training and the experience that I want? Is this program going to be a lifestyle that I can have? Um, because we all need to remember, it's a job that you're going to be at for three years, so if you end up somewhere you don't like, it's not going to be a fruitful three years for you. Um, and I think a lot of students uh, need to take that time to do the preparation to be successful and programs take notice of it when you're aware of their program and you put in a good quality application. So take the time to write your personal statement, think about what kind of message you're sending and what kind of person you're coming off as. Uh, when you write your experiences, you know, show that you've learned something through those experiences. Um, it might not be enough just to say you did volunteering and you did a lot of work, but there should, should be some sort of personal outcome for those experiences for you. And then in addition to that, be very prepared for your interviews. You should know the program, you should know basic things about the program, you should have questions ready to ask. You always want to seem interested um, and you should apply to programs that you're interested in being a part of. So that way when it comes to interview day that you can have a real conversation with those faculty members. I think there's a lot of part, uh, parts of the application obviously we can't change, so we all send the same ERAS application, um, basic information to the same program. So you need to create an application that will make you look globally good. Um, and what I mean by that is, even though you're applying to a certain specialty, different programs have different values, different programs are in different settings. So your application needs to look good to a wide variety of programs, not just one particular type of program. Um, because as IMGs, most of us end up applying to dozens, if not hundreds of programs. Um, so we need to seem as appealing as possible to as many of those people. The parts of the application that you have control over, um, things like personal statements, um, things like what experiences you write about, you really need to think about um, what does this program value? What is the specialty value? What kind of skills do I need to showcase um, to make it seem like I'm going to be successful here? Uh, the programs want to know that they're not bringing on somebody that they're going to struggle with. They want to bring on somebody that they know is going to be able to learn, they're going to be able to take under their wing, and they're going to be able to produce a really good physician at the end of the day out of it. So writing things in your personal statement that show experiences that will make you stronger in that specialty will always go a long way. Um, showing that you have these values that a physician needs to have, um, things like empathy, things like integrity, things like honesty, things like leadership, those are always going to look good pro to programs because as physicians, we are leaders in a lot of ways and we de uh, are in a job where we're dealing with people's personal lives, so we need to show those things. 
there's uh, thousands, I think, of resources out there that students can use. During basic sciences, I was a very visual person, so video resources were my best friend. Things like Pathoma, Sketchy, Boards and Beyonds uh, were my go-tos to learn. Then going into clinical sciences, um, it's a little bit different. In clinical sciences, you want to choose resources that are going to help you connect things from your basic sciences to real patient scenarios. How do you manage, treat, diagnose patients? So Boards and Beyonds also has very good uh, video series for that. I used Online Med a lot. Um, that was recommended to me by some senior students. And there's a lot of other resources similar to Online Med Ed who do video lectures and lecture type uh, series that explain different specialties, different diagnoses, uh, different patient management skills to you. So I always tell students, um, go on to Google, uh, go on to forums, threads, ask your senior students, what did you use? How did you prefer, pre prepare for these exams? And most importantly, what made you successful? Um, because that's where you'll get your good feedback as students who have been through it before. Um, going into residency, there's a lot of organizations we can be part of that'll help you. Uh, I always tried to read updates from ECFMG. I was part of the American Medical Association and read through their international medical graduate section um, in terms of just getting resources and tips on how to apply and how to come up with a residency application that makes you look good. For me, uh, I kind of bounced between some specialties. At first, I was really internal medicine heavy, and now I'm kind of uh, considering the idea of emergency medicine because I really liked my rotations. So I've applied to emergency medicine programs that I'm really seeking, and I've actually come by, uh, applied to some combined programs. So there are a handful of combined programs in the country that offer EM and IM combined training. So I'm hoping to hear back from a couple of them and uh, do some interviews from them. And after residency, I'm really hoping to go back into medical education. I spent a lot of my time in basic sciences being a tutor. I'm spending some of my time as a counselor with St. James right now, still teaching students. And I really like the idea of passing on my knowledge and experience to other people. So uh, being part of program leadership, being part of uh, hospital leadership and taking part in medical education is really where I see my role. For people considering medicine, you know, really consider the work that's involved. It's not an easy process. Everyone would make it as a doctor if it was a very easy field. Um, so if you're gonna come into this, be ready to put in the work, be organized, be prepared for things um, because not everyone is gonna be able to make it past the exams. Not everyone is gonna be able to make it into residency matching uh, because it is a very competitive process for everybody across the board, not just international medical graduates. So. Uh, if you have those skills, you know, you're an organized person, you're responsible and you love helping people, that will keep your fire burning. Um, but the real thing that's going to sustain you over a long time is um, being prepared for all those milestones, um, not getting distracted by, you know, what other students are saying or necessarily what other students are doing um, and asking questions. There's a lot of people with experience out there that can help you and give you pieces of advice that are going to help you uh, make your decisions easier or help make that path easier for you. So never be afraid to ask questions because the people that are going to be good mentors and teachers are the people who are going to answer those questions honestly for you.